Welcome to the Happy Black Woman Podcast, where we're on a mission to empower women to transform their lives through personal development and entrepreneurship. We bring you all the information, inspiration, and motivation you need to create a life of happiness, success, and freedom. Now, please welcome your host, the happy black woman herself, Rosetta Thurman. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Happy Black Woman Podcast. I am very, very excited to present to you this week's guest. We've had some phenomenal ladies on the podcast, I have to say. And Allison Bird is no exception. She comes highly recommended. And I don't I don't know how we have never met in person or talked on the phone or anything. Um, and so I'm excited to have the opportunity to interview her for myself as well as for you because her name has been flying all over the place. Um, uh, really being on Lisa Nichols' team and now being known as the Profit Accelerator, I know that so many of our happy black women are working on that right now as you're in the process of creating your ideal life through personal development and entrepreneurship. So I am going to go ahead and welcome Allison, and we're going to get started. Welcome, Allison. Hey, I'm so excited to be with you. I think this is going to be one of the most extraordinary interviews that I've ever had before. Happiness is one of my favorite subjects. And so thank you for trusting me with your audience. And let's play and rock it out. Yeah, I mean, there's so much I want to ask. But, um, you know, we always post uh, bios on the site. And I really just want to hear from you uh, a little bit more about your mission and your journey. I know a bit about you from what I've heard from our colleagues that said that you should have Alice on the podcast. So <laughs> tell me just a little bit more about you and and how how you came to be Allison Bird's a profit accelerator. Oh wow. Um, well, first of all, you know I want to acknowledge every woman that's listening to this, and I want to say that. I am a reflection of you, and as we go through this journey over the next few moments that we're together, I want you to see me, and I want you to see you in me. Uh, You know, my story is a reflection of your story. Everyone has a hero and a hero's journey. We all have something that we've walked through, whether that's been, you know, uh, turmoil or triumph, pain or purpose, power, possibility, greatness. Uh, you know, and goodness, or sometimes break down and break out so that we can get to our breakthrough. For me, my story is, is really simple. I live one of the most extraordinary lives that I see out there, and the reason is because I've learned, Rosetta, how to look in the mirror first. When I was younger, um, and when I say younger, I don't mean age younger, but when my soul was younger and my spirit was younger, I always got caught up looking to the left and looking to the right, meaning I was perpetually in the disease and the dis-ease of comparison. I always wondered, well, what's she doing? Well, what's he doing? Well, why are they doing that? Well, maybe they heard from God bigger than me, or, you know, maybe they got a divine calling better than me. Maybe I should do what they do and say what they say. You know, maybe I should have the mannerisms of, you know, a a Dr. Paula White. Maybe I should have, you know, invoke the inspiration of a T.D. Jakes. Maybe I should be calm and mild like Joel Osteen, or maybe I should be fiery and tearful like Lisa Nichols, or, you know, I always wondered maybe I should be until I decided what if I just chose to be me unapologetically, you know, if it was possible to actually live a new normal that was a woman over ready for a new paradigm of personal leadership and emergence to live in adventure and to be freedom focused and trust my instincts and lean into my intuition, my own personal intuition with a whole body. Yes. What if I were just Allison in her queenly anointing? What if I said yes to that? What passion, what energy, what life awaited me, and what excitement and joy would rise out of me, what change maker would I be, and what radical revolution would I create for my own soul? I said yes to that. I was like, you know what, those are some pretty smart questions. I'm going to say yes. And and that's really when I began to discover my rise, you know. And so my life today, 
You know, I run a sales agency that works with thought leaders who are committed to do more, be more, and create more. And we very simply handle the sales for them. We jump in and we say, you be the genius. Let us be the sales channel and let us bring you checks and contracts and do the work. It's real simple. And then I also run a coaching side that works with coaches, speakers, authors, entrepreneurial leaders that are service-based, whether they're in, you know, real estate, financial services, massage therapy, hypnotherapy, you know, multi-level marketing. And we help them monetize through being brave and high-level contributors into the market. Dr. Maya Angelou said this before she passed away. When you do good, you should live well. And so I believe that if you live well, you should do good. It's reciprocal. And the Reverend Michael Beckwith says it this way, how can you be the light if, you, if you're if you worried about your lights being on? And so I started my business on ambition and air, two things that don't pay a bill. Right. <laughs> you know? And I was fueled by the opinion of others. You can do it. It's great, which feels really good. But, again, doesn't pay a bill. And so seven months into owning my business, the world knew who I was. I was on the cover of digital ma- magazines. I was traveling, you know, from New York to California to Canada, here in the U.S., had some uh, light touches in the U.K. I had a very small, intimate following, but the world knew who I was, that I was not monetizing. And so seven months deep, I was, you know, on an NBC affiliate here in Texas and leaving that affiliate, putting on a wig, putting on shades, and with my Chanel bag and my Tom Ford shake, I was walking into the food stamp office getting government assistance because I didn't know how to monetize my dream. I had gotten caught up in that conversation of if you live your passion, you'll be profitable. And mm-hmm. that's not always true. It's true for some, but it's not always true. And so I had to change my pledge of allegiance. And I had to create a new pledge of allegiance to my own profitability, my own prosperity, my own authenticity, and my own courageousness in the market. I had to commit to no longer blend and start being red hot and raising the flag as a woman in business and stop whispering and saying, I'm here. If you need help, I'm here. If you want to hire me, what's your pricing? Oh, it's customized. You know, I stopped hiding behind all those Mm. different things and say, I don't want to sell. I don't want to make money. No, I want to sell. I want to make money. I want to make a difference for you. I'm here to make a difference for your business. When you hire me, you're making a smart decision. I will effectuate change in your bottom line. I got bold about it. And when I did that, I shifted my own profitability. I started to see my own possibility in a bigger way. I stepped into the depth of my purpose, and I began to be meaningful, and I found the next level of my rise, and I have never looked back. So that's who I am today. And I can never tell you who I am today without telling you who I was because people look and they go, you got the house, you got the car, you're, you know, I look on on Facebook and you look fun. I look at your tweets and I look at your website. Mm -hmm. But listen, don't judge my breakthrough if you don't know my been through. I have been through the fire and I came out on the other side and even still go through it many times today only so that I can reach back and I can pull you forward and reach to my sisters in the journey on the side of me and pull them with me and reach up to my mentors who are ahead of me and find ways to contribute to them. My soul's responsibility is to be a contribution in this world, which means I will go through breakdown often, but I will not duplicate it. I will rise. I will be wonderful. I will be great, even in my own imperfection, and that's who I get to be today. I love that you said that's who you get to be today. It's a privilege to have been on this journey and experiencing all that you've experienced and so much more to come. So I just love your energy. I love the trajectory that you shared with us. So in all these experiences, it sounds it sounds like you've gone from supporting other people and it sounds like you've had your own transformation in your own personal and professional development, I I <laughs> imagine that you've invested a lot in yourself. Like, what was the moment where you actually decided that instead of really support, you said you were hiding, I don't know if this is part of it, but um, supporting other people and being a part of their team and, and going out on your own, front and center, face all over the internet. <laughs> was there one moment where you said, I'm going to 
I'm going to go out there. Like, what what time period was that? How long ago was that? Let me say that the whispers of that were there for several years. When I stepped into work, and you mentioned me, you know, working with and alongside and for Lisa Nichols, a lot of mm-hmm. people know her as a feature teacher in The Secret. She mm-hmm. created a phenomenal motivational training company called um, Motivating the Masses. And when I stepped side by side into, uh, you know, working with Lisa Nichols and became a senior executive on her staff as the director of global sales and helped to grow her back of the room sales by 1,081%, we went into emerging markets, Kazakhstan, China, Canada, Mexico, um, you know, uh, the Ukraine, you know, places that I can't even name or remember today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, what what made me step out was, number one, I saw Lisa live in her life. And mm-hmm. there's just something contagious about being around people who live in their life and flex in their power and they do it in a way where they, you know, a lot of people I hear them say, oh, that's so humbling. And they make humility an external expression. Mm. And um, humility is meant to come from within. Humility is an internal rise. It's not handed to you. It's something that is inborn, inbred. And you've got to cultivate the soil of your own humility. And I saw that of Lisa again and again and again and again. And it was one of the most loving, compassionate, um, incredible uh, teachings that I got from her. And so in the process, one day I was in the back of the room, and I was supporting her in Mexico, and I just had a big old aha. And I said, oh, my God, you know, there's another iteration of my purpose. Because I I was so happy. I, I loved what I was doing. I was traveling all over the globe, you know, working side by side with Lisa and my my influence had increased from over 100,000 to over 38 million because of my alignment with her. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't like life was bad. I mean, I felt like I had cracked the code to success here. Um, and I just realized, wait a minute, there's another iteration of my purpose. And I want the woman that's listening to me right now, the woman who who is asking yourself, is now the time for me to take my glory and run? Is now the time for me to master my significance, own my power, live my truth, rise up, and design a new normal for myself? My answer to you is always yes. There's always another iteration. There's a growth. And I think sometimes we can think we land on it. You know, like, you know, you somersault and you land, but you forget there are more tumbles available for you. And, you know, Mm -hmm. there's more opportunity for you to grow and go. You know, Michael Jordan, when he stepped out of basketball and went into playing baseball, everybody was like, you're crazy. You're basketball. That's the only thing you can be great at. Well, really, no, because if you follow him, you know he's great at basketball, golf. He's great at, you know, baseball. Mm -hmm. He's uh, a great businessman. And we limit ourselves. I had that aha that I was limiting myself And I needed to step into that. And so that was the awakening, and it whispered to me for two years until it agitated me. And here's how the agitation showed showed up for me, my bank account, my body, Mm -hmm. my relationship, Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and my spirituality. So I stopped. I started to distance myself from God, how I acknowledge God, because because spirit wasn't saying what I wanted it to say. Spirit was agitating me from a place of convenience into conviction. And I didn't like it. I was like, ah. So instead, I started backing up. You know, it showed up in my body. I, I gained almost 100 pounds just eating, 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 trying to satiate a void. And the void was in my purpose. It wasn't in my plate. I had my peas mixed up, girl. I had to get that clear. You know, and uh, and and since then, I had weight relief surgery and invited some phenomenal conscious thought leaders to help me in my own food food uh, food journaling and 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 emergence and rise inside of that, and have released almost all of that 100 pounds. Um, you know, it showed up in my relationships. I was about to marry a man who was a great man, but he wasn't my husband. And the reason that I was about to marry him was because our relationship was in baggage claim in Skype. I was traveling all over, 
and he was great when I visited home, but long term, he wasn't mine. And mm-hmm. um, I didn't know how to deal with that. You know, a, a highly successful woman, ambitious out there. And I was scared to be alone. And so it was easier to sacrifice what I truly desired and truly deserved than to be accountable to what was really mine. And so 90 days before the wedding, I severed that relationship and said, we must complete this. If you're honest and if I'm honest, we got to clean this up. And um, and then finally, you know, I looked at my um, my bank account. It was your yes. bank account is always reflective of are you in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. And um, and my bank account was showing me that I wasn't. So I made some significant shifts. And so the way that you can do that, if you're listening and you go, that sounds courageous. Well, it was courageous, but it was hard. And there were many days I was in the bottom of my shower with the, you know, I've got one of those big rain showers and the water was just tumbling over me. And I was just screaming and crying and in the anguish of transformation, not because that's how difficult transformation has to be, but that's how difficult I had made it. So if you want to know how I would coach you to do it differently, I would just say grab a blank piece of paper, you know, put a big T so it gives you four quadrants and put health and wellness in one quadrant, relationships in another quadrant, money, finances, uh, fiscal responsibility, you know, in another quadrant, and then spirituality, prayer, meditation in another quadrant. And rate yourself on a one to five in each quadrant. Five meaning it's so extraordinary, there's no way to touch it. You know, I don't have any fives. Personally, I have fours, 4.2s, you know, um, because there's always ways of growth, but rank it. And then one being 911, if I don't pay attention to this, you know, I'm really going to have some major threats in that area of my life. Rank yourself. And then after you rank yourself, be honest. You know, are you a one? Are you a two? Are you a 2.5? If you're threes across the board, you're probably not being honest with yourself because nothing is that easy street. You know, um, so be honest. And then, right, what would help you make one degree of change? What's one action that you can give yourself permission to do that would give you one degree of change in each area, not more than one? Because we're super achievers, we're overachievers, we'll fill our plate with too much to do, and then we'll fail, and then we'll get frustrated by that failure. And instead of failure being our teacher, it will become our destination and we'll find ourselves Mm. stuck. So don't do that. You know, just give yourself permission for one degree of change and then give yourself 14 days for each area. You know, 14 days in this area, then after that 14 days, tag team like a relay race. And look at that. And over the course of four sets of 14 days, you will have shifted your own personal reality. And it it doesn't take a coach. It doesn't take a mentor to do that. It doesn't take a teacher. It takes you. It takes yourself. It takes your heart. It takes your passion. It takes your own personal clarity. And you can be the catalyst to get yourself from where you are to where you desire to be. That's what I do for myself on a, on a consistent basis so that I'm hyper responsive to my own personal growth and transformation. That's a great exercise. I love it. I mean, you've had so many awesome guests on giving, um, giving all of us real food for thought and taking stop, like taking a moment to pause and really ask yourself, How's my life doing? What's going on? And I love that you shared the story about noticing how mm. things were out of whack in your relationships, in your finances, on your in your body, because those are so key and that you took the courageous steps to really turn it all around. And now you're in this new place and you're front and center in your business helping entrepreneurs make that money. So tell me just a little bit about your typical day or your typical week um, So what it looks like for you as you go and build your business, run your run your empire, and take care of yourself. Oh, my God. Well, first of all, there's never anything typical about my day. Um, there's nothing typical about my life. You know, uh, my, you know, I find the front row and the front seat of life every single day. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, so there's nothing typical about it. You know, on Mondays, I set up my days to spend time with my team. 
You know, I've got a team that is, I run a virtual office. So here in San Antonio, Texas, where I live, home of the first, <laughs> where I live, you know, is my office. And so here I've got my personal assistant and uh, I've got my a director of client services that comes in the office, has an office here in my home as well, and then my executive assistant. So we're pretty simple. You know, on Mondays we get life, you know, going, what's up, what what needs to happen for me personally. I will say one of the biggest things I did um, for, my, for my life, I learned this from Allie Brown, who is a mentor to successful leaders, is I hired a personal assistant. And um, mm-hmm. my personal assistant does everything personal for me, my laundry, my shopping, my getting my car clean, picking up, you know, uh, running errands for me. She does all of that. And uh, I hired a personal assistant when I was barely making $5,000 a month. And the first, the first time that that personal assistant went out and did work for me for two hours, um, I made over $35,000 on sales calls during that time. Made a huge oh, difference. I mean, that's, that's huge. I mean, I love that you brought that up around the health piece first um, because it's a huge conversation that we have in our Happy Black Homeless community. We're always talking about, you know, most of the women in our community who are building their business are at the beginning stages, and they have a full-time job still. They have, they have families to take care of and always talking about how to get it all done. And I love that you brought up hiring help. Um, because it's one of those things that's like one of the last pieces that a lot of women hold on to because, Mm -hmm. well, lots of reasons, but especially as black women, we have been taught and trained and ingrained in us to take care of our own house, make sure your house is clean, take care of the kids, all these things we're supposed to do. So I love that what you shared with us today is that it can all get done, just not by you. (laughs) And let me, let me tell you, and I think that we also, many of us, not all of us, but many of us make the assumption and operate under the presumption that uh, two things, number one, that we can't afford it, and number mm-hmm. two, who am I to have it? You know, it's a worthiness right. conversation. Who, who am I to do that? Well, I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you right now, that was a lesson for me, making over $35,000 in under an hour while someone is running errands and I was paying her $25 an hour, it made sense now. I mean, I got a big awakening. I and mean, so, talk about return on investment. I mean, oh. that was a <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I got to keep it yeah. real. I, right. you know, I got to so. keep it real. And, and so even, you know, my sweet, amazing mother just passed away not too long ago, and I missed her greatly. And when she went into the hospital, I went to spend time with her, and I called my assistant. She goes, I got you. I came Mm -hmm. home once I realized my mom was going to stay in the hospital to two bags packed. Um, And they had, you know, my heated blanket, you know, my thugs, my, um, well, my thugs, because I I refused. I'll have a personal assistant, but I refuse to pay 200 bucks for some furry boots when, you know, pay less, Mm -hmm. that's a good version. But anyway. That's my own, you know, that's my own thing. You know, I, I love I love a good shoe, but not furry boots mm-hmm. or whatever. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, but I came back and she had all my favorite snacks, everything ready, and that's just a joy. I mean, when I walked in my home, I collapsed in tears, and she laid hands on my back, and she said, God, give her strength, you know, for this moment. And so she was not only – my assistant at that moment, but she was my friend and she was covering me in prayer and in love. And she had my back, you know, she put everything in the car. She said, the house is taken care of. The dogs are taken care of. Go do your mom, go be, go do life with your mom. You need this moment. So I say that to say it's worth every level of investment. And if you're thinking I can't do it, the only time I ever had my PA working when I first started was when I did sales calls. It was the only time. And it was on Tuesdays and Thursdays for three hours. Um, And then after that, I changed it to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for five hours. And then all my laundry, my dishes, my errand running, my everything was done, and it was worth the investment. So, you know, Mondays, that's what my days look like. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I spend time with my clients and doing consultancies with. And then Wednesdays is when I do my midweek. I review all of my clients' work that they're sending in. I do a lot of Internet stalking. 
And what I mean mm-hmm. by that is mm-hmm. I'm always on the hunt for my next client, my next opportunity to serve someone in a big way. So I'm looking at what are people out there doing. I'm listening to their webinars. I'm thinking, can I write stronger scripts for them? Can I help them sell and position themselves? You know, can I make a difference if they have an outreach to 10, 15,000, you know, what can I do to help make that outreach stronger? And then I'm picking up the phone, dialing them and saying, hey, my name's Allison Bird, and I want to support you in your focus on people. I want to support you to be more profit-driven, and I can show you how. So that's what Wednesdays look like. And then Fridays look like much of the same thing as Wednesdays. And then generally Friday afternoon, I find some way to relax with family, friends, maybe a mentee in the area or some local business owner. And then on Saturdays, I teach. I teach my group sessions. Um, I work with entrepreneurial leaders to help them. And and a lot of times, entrepreneurial leaders that are on the rise can't afford some of the one-on-one work with me. So we do group sessions on Saturday mornings from 10 to 2. And then on Sundays, that's my day of worship and relaxation. And that's my life. It gets interrupted, of course, by, you know, travel. And then, you know, there are other things sprinkled in there. I'm I'm newly single, so I date and I have some fun on Tinder and Match.com and all that good stuff. And I work out and I cook and, you know, I do all those fun things. But at the end of the day, my life is centered around contribution to the things that are the most valuable to me, my family, myself, and my purpose. Those are the things that are important. And my family is so inclusive of my community here in San Antonio and then across the globe. So, I, you know, I love what my days look like. Pretty simple, mm-hmm. I think. Oh, I'm so glad that you shared that with us because I'm starting to hear a pattern of all the successful women entrepreneurs we've had on the show that the key to really getting the success that you want is really having intention around your time and your energy. So I love that you sprinkle those nuggets in with hearing your schedule And really, I want to make sure we have some time to talk about what inspires you as you go on your journey. I mean, there are levels to success, right? I mean, as you continue to grow, there are different goals that I know you're probably trying to achieve. Uh, Benevolence, right? It's like you always want a different goal. You always are going different heights. So how do you stay inspired? That's such a good question. You know, I mentioned that my mother graduated into heaven recently, and um, Mm. it's been it's been highly challenging to stay inspired because I miss her so deeply. You know, Mm. and I think that the you know the great question is how do you stay inspired when inspiration feels so distant? You know, and when motivation feels fraudulent, and it feels like Mm. how can I dare be motivated when? You know, I just I just lost the, the greatest love of my life. So how do you stay inspired when it doesn't feel cool? And my answer is really through my own prayer, meditation, and community. So to me, prayer is when I talk to God and when I have something to say directly to God, like help, <laughs> you know, give me clarity, you know, I need strength or what my opinion is on the matter why, you know, when I ask questions, why did this happen? Why did it go this way? Uh, you know, I was raised not to question God, and I'm so grateful that I shifted that conversation when I was 19 years old when I heard about the book from Neil Donald Walsh, Conversations with God. I began to realize that God was strong enough to handle my questions. And so um, prayer is important to me, my ability to be self-expressed to the divine. Um, and then meditation. Meditation is when I hear back. Now that I've expressed myself, now, you know, now, you know, the divine has something to say back to me. Spirit has a voice as well. You know, I don't believe I serve a mute God. And so I meditate so that I can hear and download and receive the clarity, the course correction, the healing, the laughter, Mm -hmm. the infusion of joy, you know, the gratitude, um, the understanding, and the I you that I need to hear from God that can sometimes feel so distant, especially when we're in the ache of our current circumstances, you know. And then finally, my community. My community means the world to me. You know, I have community through 
joint venture relationships. I have community through work. You know, I have community that way. And I have community that are my sisters and my brothers who are, you know, who come into my home and we hang out. I just posted on Facebook to a small group of folks, you know, this Sunday, come over, let's do potluck. You know, I'm going to throw, you know, I'm going to pick up some wings and, you know, I'm going to make one of the favorite dips that everybody loves. You know, I just got one of my favorite kinds of vodka, you know, sorry for those of you that don't drink, but I make an amazing, you know, vodka drink. And, you know, I just said, you know, I got these different things and, you know, come over and play and and everybody come hang out. And so it's imperative to me that I have a grounding community that allows me to be Allison that's not Allison to the world. You know, I'm always naturally Mm -hmm. myself, Rosetta. However, there are times where I need to take my cape off and I'm not going to answer the business question and I don't have the saving grace and I don't have the holy grail of profit acceleration and the gospel of sales and profit and, and, and go to market strategies. You know, I'm just a girl that's going to tell the, the, the joke that's not funny and wonder why no one's laughing because I'm going to laugh before uh-huh. everybody else. You know, I'm the girl that's going to cheat at Monopoly when you're not looking. I'm going to throw an extra house up there. You know, I, I'm that girl, and uh, and I want to be her, and I want to be, you know, in my yoga pants and not worried about Spanx or a bra and watching my HGTV and, you know, and all that good stuff, and I want people around me that know how to embrace me and know that I'm great, know that I'm strong. My friend sent me this yesterday. He said, I know you're grieving, and I want you to know that grief is not weakness. And I want you to know that we all know you're strong and we all know that you need love right now and you have to be willing to let us in. And so I I have surrounded myself with a community that doesn't allow me to close the door. They put their foot in. They put a wedge in and they Mm -hmm. say, we're here for you, superwoman. And the S on your chest is a watermark and allow us to pour into you. We cannot always be the pitcher you know, sometimes we have to be the cup and we have to be open to receive. And so those are all the ways that I stay inspired. I love that. Sometimes we have to be the cup. And sometimes it feels really good to be the cup. You know? Yes. So that is um, really, really wonderful to share about the people that you surrounded yourself with. And it's a really great reminder for all of women in our happy black woman community because we're often the people that everybody else calls. So to really surround yourself <laughs> with those people who you can call is really a skill. It's really a skill. So thank you for sharing that. And, um, I mean, in, in all of this, is there any favorite book that you go back to over and over that lifts you up? Hmm. That's a really good question. You know, I love reading from and drawing from two incredible reads. One of them is from my own Christian faith, the Bible. It's imperative because it has laws and truths that are, you know, that withstand the test of time. So I love, I love the Bible. I read the Bible differently as an adult than I did as a kid. And so I love to read the stories of, of triumph and failure and, and greatness and, and goodness, you know, I love that. So I read the Bible differently now um, as a study tool and also as one of the most hilarious, uh, racy books of all time. They had, you know, they, they were funny. They had great sex. They had, you know, they had crazy times. They did bad things. They did amazing things. They felt like they could do nothing, and then they did everything. I mean, the Bible is just like a phenomenal book. <laughs> if, you, if you, you know, if you read it, it just has so much stuff. You're like, ah! All this stuff happened. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then I like to read the course, uh, you know, a course in miracles, and because it gives you such openness and permission um, with spirit. And so I love, uh, you know, a course of miracles. And then for profession, I always return to the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's one of the best books written of our time, I believe. And it's a book that it's not a book you can read and be done. I think it's a book that you go back to again and again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those are great recommendations. I love them. We're going to add those to our Happy Black Woman book list. And while we're on inspiration, do you have a personal mantra, a motto, or a quote that you live by? I do. Mine for me is, you know, be unapologetic. You know, mm-hmm. that it's two words. It's very simple. Be unapologetic. And, 
that came from me living a life where, you know, I was always loud and, and, and excitable, gregarious and charismatic. You know, I was five years old with this raspy little heavy voice and, you know, people always question me, why do you sound like that? Why are you so excited? Why are you so energetic? You know? And so I started to leash myself and tether myself to a behavior that was artificial to me. And that stifled and stymied my greatness at an early age. And so it took a while for me to find my unstoppable factor and to start being untamable in that, you know, I've got five favorite yous, unapologetic, unfiltered, unleashed, unstoppable, and untamable. Those are huge for me because I had to stop being filtered. What What is this person going to think about what I say? Yes, I drink vodka. Yes, I read the Bible. They don't cancel each other out, by the way. Although, Diet Coke cancels <laughs> cancel out French fries. You know, it will. No. <laughs> if you didn't know, Diet Coke cancels out French fries. All of my healthy conscious eaters are like, please don't talk about fries or Diet Coke with artificial sweetener. But I live by those five U's, unapologetic, unfiltered, unleashed, unstoppable, and untamable, because those are all words that are freedom-centric, you know, all words that are about adventure and being a change maker and leaning into your own intuition and being responsible for creating the life that you desire. So my mantra in total, though, is be unapologetic. You'll see it as a hashtag that I use on almost everything. If you follow me on Instagram at I am Allison Bird, you'll see it. It is, you know, I probably dominate that hashtag because it's what's real for me and it speaks to my soul and I don't need it to be trending for me to say yes to it. I need it to be effective. Yeah. I love it. Be unapologetic. Beautiful phrase. I'd love to get advice for all of our ladies who are thinking about starting a business, doing what they love. You've gone through many phases in your own business, helping other business owners. What's the one number one tip, quick tip that you could give to women who are just at the beginning stages of this journey? Make money. <laughs> I love it. Make <laughs> money. It, it really helps. Make make money. Make money. Master your hustle. Master your influence. Raise your hand, sound the alarm, tell the world you're there, tell people I want to do business with you, you know, make it non-negotiable to make money. Sales covers a multitude of sin, which means if your operational function isn't there, your financial forecasting isn't solid, your go-to-marketing strategy isn't there, if you can make money, you can hire to your weaknesses and you can begin to, you, you'll hear me say this time and time again, pledge allegiance to the thing that you want. Make money. It will buy you freedom. It will buy you systems. It will buy you automation. It will buy you staff. Money gives you access to the things that you need. Expand your impact. Two-thirds of our world still lives on less than $2 a day. The world needs us to change the statistic of making money, not just as happy black women, but as women, as entrepreneurial leaders. You know, the the numbers show that 4% of our world barely tips over, uh, you know, $100,000. You know, 4%, that's a big deal. That means 96% of our society is struggling in their finances in some way. Statistics show us in America alone, we have an 85% chance of being poor. We have a 77% chance of being affluent. Choose your statistic. Choose it, mm-hmm. you know. And so choose your statistic by being smart, by being viable, by being relevant, and by making money so that you can make a difference in the world. Make money. I love it. Ah, I love it. Make money to make a difference. And um, you can buy a lot of shoes, too, if you want. (laughs) Girl, preach it. (laughs) Yes. Gosh. Well, I I could talk to you all day, Allison. I'm so excited that this was the way that I met you because I got to hear your story. I got to hear um, a little bit of what your life is like. So I hope this is not the last time we talk. Uh, I don't think it will be. But in the meantime, how can our listeners and me stay in touch with you? Do you have any resources that we can get from you? And where can we go to get them? 
<laughs> that's a that's a great question. Well, I want to tell everybody, you know, I'd love for you to stay connected to me. I want to stay connected to you. I love that you have entrusted me to be able to infuse, you know, some power and possibility into your audience of all the things that anyone could give us. Time is the most precious because you can't get it back. So you got to get a return on that investment of time and you got to get a return on the finish. Like I finished my time with you. Now what? Right? Yes. Um, yes. So my mantra, Be Unapologetic, is also my website. So go to BeUnapologetic.com, and there you'll get access to download my Be Unapologetic uh, manifesto. And I love that manifesto. I wrote that out of my own uh, purpose and my own pain. And um, and so you can download that. You can put that on your phone. You can save it as a screensaver. You can print it, put it on your refrigerator, in your mirror, wherever you want. Um, I've also got some goodies on there, some replays, some different things that you can grab. I do believe in giving, and I do believe in the spirit and in the law of generosity. So if you go to www.beunapologetic.com, please explore our community, be connected there, and uh, download any replays that you see, and definitely put that unapologetic manifesto on your screen or on your refrigerator somewhere in front of you so that you can remember for yourself to stay unapologetic, unfiltered, unleashed, unstoppable, and untamable as you define it. I love it. Thank you for that resource. So everybody can go to BeUnapologetic.com and get resources from Allison and uh, really be inspired and make money. <laughs> so I will post all of these links and our book recommendations, notes from our conversation in the show notes and on the blog. So, really, just thank you, Allison, for your time. I so appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled that you had me on. And, you know, I just applaud you for being so bold and so clear on your lane. So many people want to save the world, and they don't realize that out of 7 billion people, they can have that powerful niche that's just for them. And so you're going after women who want to be happy, who are black, who are powerful, who are prolific, and who have a demand for greatness in their lives. And so thank you for branding yourself in a way that we could find you, we could raise our hands, we could say yes, and we could sign up for our own happiness. I know I'm definitely a part of the movement. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Coming from a profit accelerator, I know there's more out there for me. <laughs> so yes. uh, thank you again. And for all of you who are listening, please, Allison is just one of the many guests that we have had. Phenomenal, giving amazing advice. If you haven't, Go back and listen to our previous episodes. We have had so many amazing women entrepreneurs sharing their secrets and their tips and their inspiration with you. So make sure that you go back and listen to our previous episodes and stay tuned for upcoming episodes with more incredible happy black women. Until then, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Happy Black Woman Podcast. If you want all the show notes from today's episode, go to happyblackwomanpodcast.com. Plus, we'll send you a copy of Rosetta's free life mapping workbook. We look forward to empowering you next time. And until then, do something this week that makes you happy.